All right, best five out of six round groups with the uh, SIG 115 uh, Elite Performance, 15 yards starting with the bull. Double feed. Nope, failure to extract there. Failure to extract. Let's see what the grouping is. Best five out of six. And my fingers are getting cold. I'm already getting uh, fatigued out from all the shooting because this has been filmed backwards. But anyway, the bull at 15 yards, we got just under 3.4 inches, something about there, minus 0 0.355. So really about a three-inch group with the SIG ammo and the bull. And I, now with the bull and the Federal 124, 15 yards. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using the combat hold. Fortunately, things happened, guys. So today I got filmed out of the way, and my fingers and my body is already aching and cold. And so that's about a 3.4 inch group with the federal. If I minus this one and go along as there to there and minus 3.55, about a 3.4 inch group with federal ammo. But uh, point of impact. I think it's just me jerking the trigger a little left. I shot good at long distance. Now with the grand power of 15 yards, and I'm fatiguing out, guys, but with the uh, SIG uh, 115 ammo. Failure, and I can't even get it to run. Like, this is too many failures in this pistol. I am jammed up. Failure feed. Take the bag out and kick it sideways and oh no, and open it up, and shake it. My slide is half off the gun. Oh. But this actually got sent back to Global Ordnance. The over the slide doesn't see any damage, but reviewed my video and believes that it says my very was hitting the left side of the takedown lever. And unlike other pistols, apparently, uh, where other pistols you got to pull down on both tabs. Um, so I do consider that use. I do wear XL gloves. Um, he has small hands. He was not able to replicate it, but. Uh, thankfully, he was thorough. He gave it to someone with larger hands, longer fingers the next day, who was able to replicate it. So he does believe that happened. Uh, I don't have extremely long fingers, but like I said, I do wear an XL glove. If you have large hands and you use a good high thumbs forward grip, uh, it's something definitely to be aware of. And since this was the small size I bought for occasional carry, I was hoping to vet it for carry. Uh, and whatnot, put grip tape on it and a uh, front night sight and all that. Um, thankfully, it seems like Global Ordnance will be taking care of me. So it's just something to be aware of. Probably be a great carry gun for him. He couldn't replicate it because his hands are smaller. So if you got small hands, uh, you know, or you use a different grip, okay. But if you have large hands and you use the type of grip you see me using in the video, then it's something to definitely be very mindful of. So you'll see it happens again here in a second. And it seemed to be okay now, and it's not all lifted up like it was before. 
And even with that incredibly weird and strange uh, coming off the rails thing, I don't know what's going on yet until I just sell it. I got, uh, with the SIG ammo, it's under 3 inches. It's like 3.3 minus 0.355. All right, with the grand power, I don't know what happened. I was scared the chassis system broken. I disassembled it and swore many times trying to get the slide back on because it's a pain in the butt even knowing the trick. Nothing seemed broken, but I saw on video and it was way more gap than it's supposed to be. Like as one side, at least the front left rail looked like it was completely off. I believe it was. It's back together. It's functioning. It seems like it's on the rails fine. I don't see anything broken yet. I think I need to switch, uh, send it back to Global Hornets. Anyway, did group under three inches with the SIG, and I'm not a group shooter, guys. But anyway, with the 124 Federal, here we go. With both eyes open. Going hot. Failure to feed, yet another failure with three different types of ammo today. And on video before, you've seen it fail when I did one-handed uh, movement drills. Oh, hey, look, the slide is way up. All right, so I'm kind of hot, guys. I'm pointing that way, but it's not loaded. Um, so easy to load. Look there how it is a lot of gap. Why is it like this? Double. Yeah. They run it back. Double the price for yeah, half the ammo. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I hit it on top, front. Stick with this nine. It's back on the rails. At least it seems to be. With all these, you know. Let's finish shooting, going hot again. Go ahead. Okay, that's what the gun looks like when it's supposed to look like where it goes back and forth on the rails. Look at that. Uh, the barrel doesn't even really tilt because it's not a browning design. It's a rotating barrel. That's as much space that it should have. And a minute ago, it didn't when it was locked with more rounds in it. It is functioning. Magazine out. Let's watch it go back and forth on the rails. No distance, no distance, no distance. Yep. Four of the six are good. Obviously, I pulled not one, but two flyers. And yes, that's really annoying. And no, I'm not Paul Harrell. And no, I'm not a group shooter. But these four are pretty good. Too bad that number five over there isn't going to be great. And without gaming the groups, like going there to there, but knowing that's the worst shot because of the shooter, not the gun. Um... That's like, I don't know, like a two and a half inch group, just over two and a half inches from there to there. So that's like 2.7 something minus 355. So just under two and a half inches, I think, or just over two and a half inches, maybe. So about two and a half inches group. Zilter has not let me down. I would bet my life on it. In fact, I have before. Um, so anyway, the Velter is doing good with all ammo. It's never had it needed a bump or anything to feed. It hasn't had any issues. All right. PPQ, 15 yards. The SIG 115 Elite Performance. Walder at 15 with the Federal 124 grain.
You just code Dan the Wolfman, get 15% off to holster holster. So yeah, I just pasted all these up, but I had a really nice group with the PPQ with the Federal 124. Uh, even the flyer wasn't a far flyer, but I mean like five of these in here. So it was 2.15 with the Federal 124. So, you know, 2.15 inch group. Of All right, bonus, because I'm sure some are curious, and you could look at my DASA auto and the accuracy of the M1152. I'm going to shoot in the PPQ. Probably want to do a lot of the PPQ because I'm not sure about their locking block. Well, some issues, uh, but I think it will handle enough and could handle enough in SHTF. Uh, that's all the ammo you could find situation, uh, as well as some, you know, plus P ammo and that kind of thing. So, anyway... Loud snap. And so, yet again, I say the PPQ is a very accurate pistol, and yet again, I say the M1152 ammo, because this is the best at least looking group, point of aim, point of impact, that one, two, three, four, and breaking the line, barely rules lawyer five, five out of the six, a six was a flyer because it let off way too soon, almost like a double tap, and five out of the six though, very good, I'll have to measure it. So the PPQ, five inch with the M1152 Winchester, military, ammo, one, two, three, four, and five, all uh, probably touching the ring, I think. Five out of the six there. Very respectable for me anyway at the end of a very long day. Shooting 2.65 inches at 15 yards. It got 2.15 with the Federal, 2.9 with the SIG. 115, Federal 124. <laughs> the Grand Power, even though it fell apart twice. We got the two and a half inch with the Federal. And the Bull, I did not I'd shoot the most accurately with the Bull. A three inch and a 3.4 inch group. So three inch and four inch with the bull, the grand power 2.5 and three. The wall there with the SIG. Been at the range literally over five hours, had about 140 rounds or so already. And uh, just a bonus here, I'm gonna try to run because I got a appendix holster, PPQ five inch. Let's try and blaze a bill drill to see if I can make make any of Gabe Wade's standards by pushing myself to see if I can make it even a little bit better if I push, but I'll probably hit too high. We'll see. I'm going to I'm gonna try and push. I mean, a little append to the Gabe Wade drills video, you know. Hopefully you've checked that out. Slide lock back. If I got time. Oh, Lord, you don't do this to me. Really? Son of a bitch didn't get any times? Oh, replay back. Let's see. And on a USPSA target or even IDPA, probably, but USPSA target, that's six good. Hits there, so time that back. You need uh, for a dark run under. Th Let's do build draw one more time. Let's try and blaze this thing, and hopefully we'll get the times. I threw one shot, lot the fifth shot. Might have been a base zone. Might have been a B. Let's see. 1.73 to first shot. I'm not the fastest guy, and this is a long day, and it's freezing. Uh, but in 2.97, so I'm well under the three point. And I'm pretty sure I made it the first time the one circled in red. I think the time was in. That time was 2.97. Pretty fast run for me, actually. And I could definitely improve on my draw to first shot times. But that one dropped slow, so 2.97. If that wasn't an echo, 9.5. Anyway, with a point two five for a B, that's just low. I just measured it. That is an 11-inch, like, USPSA type box, 8.5 by 11, 8 by 11, or whatever it is. Uh, so that one is a B. So 
Well, guys, things definitely did not go as planned today. So, anyway, which one do you think was the most accurate 9mm out of these three? And perhaps more importantly, you find out which one would you want to stake your life on, especially in a scenario we couldn't disassemble and clean every 100 rounds. This gun did pretty well, but it gets very, very dirty after just 100 rounds. Um, I would bet my life on this, and with the slide coming off twice on this and other stove type with, with other problems I've had before, quite a few different melts and ammo and failure to feeds and whatnot, I just don't know about this grand power, at least this particular one. Um, perhaps I'll try a striker or a hammer fired one someday. But let me know, guys, was it the grand power, the bull, or the Walder? Which one do you think was the most accurate? Mechanically accurate, obviously I'm not an adventurous, but which one is the most practically accurate?